Hey guys, Shukesh here. So the new Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is so amazing with feet tapping, mind blowing software features. And uh, this is the second episode of the three part video series on this S21 Ultra. So without any further ado, let's get started with the first trick, which is private share. So under biometrics and security settings, you get private share. What it does is, it can share files privately, prevent recipients from resharing and set expiry dates. You can keep your data safe with blockchain technology. So you can share photos, videos, audio and text files. First select the media you want to share, then the contacts. After that, you can share via a text message, a link, show a QR code or send via an app like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. And one thing to keep in mind that the recipient needs to have a private share software installed into their phone. With private share, you can remove location metadata from your photos to maintain privacy and private share content is encrypted before delivery which uses blockchain based encryption technology as I mentioned before. The sender can also control the recipient's access by creating and sharing a key to unlock access to the content. Up to 20 MB file can be sent and PDF support is also on the way. The sender can also track when the recipient received and read the file and also you can change the expiration date and also you can block access to the files. The recipient cannot take screenshots or record the screen. So private share ensures ultimate security with peer to peer connection. It's a brand new feature Samsung developed and currently I think Samsung devices are only supported. Guys, do you know that you can call or send text messages from other Samsung devices using the SIM card in your S21 Ultra? So under advanced features, you get this option. So what you need to do is log into your Samsung account on both smartphones. If you are from iOS, then you must already know about this. Uh, it's very useful for Galaxy Tab, which does not have a SIM slot. So you can make calls or text from the tab. In fact, if you are in the Galaxy ecosystem, there are lots of other perks like uh, you have app continuity. That is like you are browsing the web or maybe watching a video on your Galaxy S20. You can switch to your Galaxy Tab and continue what you were doing, which is very useful for Samsung Notes. Or maybe you are online shopping on your tab and want to make the payment on your phone, then you can switch right away. Now, Link Windows is another very handy feature to connect to your Windows PC for sharing media and just visit this web page on your Windows PC and scan the QR code shown. Then your phone will be connected to your PC and you can share media right away without any hassle. I mean, I personally always share uh, media through emails by emailing myself. So that's quite silly. And uh, of course, you have heard about the brilliant Samsung Dex, which offers desktop like experience from your phone just connect to your tv or monitor using a cable or you can connect to compatible tvs or your pc wirelessly the interface is laid out in such a way that you feel like you are using a true desktop computer and uh, some things are so easy doing on a bigger screen when you are traveling maybe no need to carry your laptop anymore you can do presentations in this way so definitely samsung dex is one of the best productivity features of samsung devices Guys, I hope that you are finding this video informative. A like would be highly appreciated. Guys, another very useful feature is Samsung Pass. And in the keyboard, it's so nice to have it because you can save a very sensitive data like uh, your credit card number. You can add notes like your address, which you need to input sometimes. With Samsung Pass, you can securely save it and have access to it with your biometrics or other passcode you have set. And of course, you can save your sign in details. And next time you sign in into these web pages, use your fingerprint. If you switch your devices, these signing details will be saved into your Samsung account. So 
Life is so much easier with this Galaxy ecosystem. The next feature I personally always use uh, for texting my parents or other people in my native language but uh, I'm not really comfortable typing in Bengali on the keyboard so what I do is I use translate. So whatever I need to say I just type it in English and uh, it gets translated automatically. You can chat with people in other languages with this feature. Guys, I have already talked about private share, but there are other ways to share media, starting with nearby share, which basically scans for nearby devices that can receive your file and you can share online or offline, whatever is the best protocol. And uh, there is also quick share, a Samsung feature, and it's like airdrop on iOS, but you can share media to up to five people simultaneously and uh, it scans for nearby friends that are already in your contacts and you can share media right away now there is another feature called link sharing which is my personal favorite and it's like private share but uh, you are sharing the link without any kind of control to the content so what it does is it uploads the file into samsung server and you get a link of the file which you can share publicly or maybe a text message is enough uh, to send the files and you can upload up to 2 gigabyte of files in raw quality so instead of sending photos videos via whatsapp you can use link sharing and uh, the files can be even opened on the desktop or non android or non samsung devices you can download the files of course in full quality Guys, suppose you are driving and your friend wants to access to your car's Bluetooth audio system. So what you do, you disconnect the existing Bluetooth pairing and then reconnect to your friend's Bluetooth system on the phone. So what you can do is you can allow music share through your Samsung device. That is, your phone will be still connected to the car's audio system and your friend can connect to your audio system through Bluetooth if you allow music share and you are in full control now android is developed by google which primarily sells ads and not just that a lot of other services or apps do targeted ads so samsung is giving us uh, options to opt out of ad personalization so this is something you can definitely look into on your samsung device you can also opt out from other services like android personalization service or device personalization service you can clear all data stored uh, from time to time and you can also opt out from receiving marketing information sending diagnostics data to Samsung or to Google now there is a feature on your Samsung device called secure folder I don't know whether you are aware of this or not but this is the most secured way to keep your sensitive files your personal photos videos etc on your Samsung device it uses Samsung Knox that is enterprise level security you can encrypt any data on your phone and also maintain maybe a secret profile in your device whatever you do in Samsung Knox will not show up on the devices default apps it's like a parallel application but encrypted you can either move data into secure folder like the way i have moved this photo into the secure folder gallery you can also use the apps inside the secure folder and keep the data safe for example if i take a picture using the camera right now it won't show up on the default gallery it will be encrypted and saved in the secure folder gallery I can duplicate any application that is installed in the phone into secure folder and maintain two profiles like uh, two Facebook profiles, two WhatsApp profiles, etc. You can lock the secure folder manually or it will be locked automatically when you lock your device or maybe after a while. Guys, do you know you can even hide the existence of the apps on your Samsung device under home screen settings. You have this option called hide apps where you can select the apps you want to hide from the app switcher. So it will be hidden from the apps drawer, but it's not like you have totally disabled the application and you can actually search for it. So you can launch it, you can access it from the recent apps, but it won't show up on the apps drawer. This is how you can hide your sensitive apps and also games from your gaming freak friends. 
Now, as you know, you can access to the home screen settings from the app switcher settings as well. Now, those who are from iOS, this is something you will love. You can switch to home screen only, whereas you will not see any kind of apps drawer. All the apps you have on the phone will be shown on the home screen. So this is something you can also check on your Samsung Galaxy S21, 21 Plus or 21 Ultra. Guys, on the app switcher, if you click on the app icons, you get different options including pin windows which I have already shown you in the first episode of this video series, so definitely check it out. Now you can open the apps in pop-up windows which is a great way to multitask. For example, you can put a floating calculator or maybe a chat window on your WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger and multitask. In addition to that, you can also open in split screen view, that is you can run two apps side by side and access both of them at the same time. For example, you can watch a video and also chat or take a note from the video as well. You can use the S Pen for taking notes on the note taking window and also uh, the floating window can be made transparent so that it doesn't interfere with the background. You can even save the combination of the split screen apps. So next time you want to watch a video or write an email or maybe take a note, you can access to the combination of the split screen directly from Edge panel. So H panel is one of the first Samsung smart features. You must already know about this. You can swipe on the home screen strip and access to different H panels. You can also download more. So another great way to multitask. So guys, we are almost at the end of this episode and I hope that you liked it, you found it informative. Uh, do check the first part and also the upcoming third episode which will be much more interesting. I also have two separate videos on the camera tips and tricks. So the links will be in the description. This is Shukai signing off.